Hi, everyone. Nice to see all of you again. Today's subject, tactics helping strategy. And I'm sure that you know about this uh, topic. You come across it all the time in your games. And we're basically talking about when we're using tactical tricks, tactical motives, but not in order to win material or giving mate. Instead, we use them in order to, uh, to realize positional goals in the position, to achieve uh, different strategical objectives in the position. So I started with this one. I can see that already some people, they are already sending me the right move. Anyway, uh, for the sake of justice, here is one minute. Send me Black's best move, please. All right, time's up. Uh, Laura, you found the right move. I don't have the time to name all of you, but uh, one of uh, the persons who got it right was Alexander Rutten. So please, Alex, uh, share with us what to play with Black here. Uh, I said bishop a6, and basically the idea is to exchange our super passive bishop. And uh -huh. if it takes a6, then just queen a5, and we win back our piece. Exactly. And do you think it doesn't, doesn't matter if I play bishop a6 uh, right away, or perhaps I could play, let's say, queen a5 check first? Uh, yeah, definitely. If queen a5, then there's bishop d2. Exactly. And we don't have the time to swap bishops anymore. And if we play, somebody uh, suggested move a5. I get the point, of course, to play bishop a6. But uh, white could prevent that, right? I think there's just queen e2. Exactly. I think so, too. Queen e2 and white is making black's plan a little more difficult to, to achieve. Let's say queen b6, perhaps we can play rook b1. And yeah, white wins some tempo. And maybe he will be ready to fight for the initiative with f5 later on. So uh, thanks, uh, Alex. Uh, great work. Uh, this was like a warm up so that everybody understands what we're talking about today. Bishop a6. Black is using the motive of a double attack on a5. I mean, targeting the white king and the bishop on a6 once it's taken in order to, like Alex says, swap the bad bishop. And um, maybe white should not take on a6, just for the record. Maybe white's best move here is actually castles. And I think white still has a slight advantage in this theoretical position from the French, uh, the advanced French, I think it is, or the knight c3 French. Well, never mind. After bishop takes, queen takes, uh, white will be slightly better. There are some prospects of advancing f5. But anyway, black is very happy to have swapped that passive bishop on c8. So that's a first uh, example of this topic. Now let's move on to something much more Famous. The next example, I'm sure that many of you have seen it very recently, because this was the game played between Noah Lester Giri and Firusa at uh, Tata Steel. So here we go. White to play. I would like to send me White's best continuation here. Two minutes. Uh, if it can be a sequence of, sequence of two moves, that would be great. So two minutes to think and two moves to send me, please. Okay, time's up. This was a difficult one. We have several choices here. In the first place, we should notice that black is uh, preparing to go d4. This is very important to understand, uh, threatening mate on g2, right? So we have to do something about that. One solution would be to play queen d4, like some people were saying. And uh, maybe then I think black would play rook ac8 here, pressure on the c file. We would have to protect this knight, unless we're going to give away the c pawn, rook f3 maybe. Uh, I'm not an expert in this structure, but I think maybe it's time for f6 here. And uh, I think black has some activity in this in this position, so it's it's not completely clear. Aha. So we should look for something better. We should look for something better than queen d4. And actually, the square on d4, those of you who play the French with white, uh, you know which piece belongs on that square, right? We want another piece to settle on d4. But how can we achieve that? So let's... Listen to Ryo. Ryo, you're on. How to continue okay, uh, with white here? Yeah. So I'm playing bishop d3. And so I want to play knight e2, knight d4, if you allow me. And you cannot take on c3 because bishop h7. One, hold on, hold on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So and what if I play d4 then? Yeah, queen e4. My original was queen g3, but if it was due to queen g2 check. Exactly. Some people were saying queen h3. I get the point completely. You're threatening to give mate here. However, I'm just in time to play queen takes g2. 
as you can see, black can also use some tactics here. And as you can see, black will get back the piece after that. So uh, yeah, uh, Annika is asking, this is what happened in the game. In the game, they played bishop d3. And after d4, what were you saying, Ryu? What was the right move? It's still just checkmate, so he has to trade. Exactly. We covered the, the mate against us, and we threatened mate ourselves. So here, black had to take on e4, and white just took back. Uh, that's how the game went. Uh, so what do you think, uh, Ryo? What did we achieve from this? Uh, so now the pawn on d4 is weak. Um, uh, I, don't, uh -huh. I, I, I cannot see where the knight on d7 is going. Anymore. Exactly. And the bishop, yeah, fine, is good, but really isn't attacking anything. OK, thanks, uh, Ryo. Uh, excellent work. So that's what uh, what this is about. Uh, White got some advantage here. Giri was better in this game. He's preparing to go 96, and also, like Ryo says, the pawn on d4 is weak. So we would like to play at some point, let's say, rook ft1 and attack it. In the game, Firusa played here bishop d5. He defended very well. The game went like this, knight g5, targeting the pawn on h7. Black played g6, and here knight f3. Very good move in order to attack the pawn and force the exchange on f3. And here, white was a bit better in this uh, endgame, as you can see. Had the pawn stayed on d5, interestingly enough, I think black would be OK. But now the pawn is exposed. So white had an advantage, although the game ended in a draw. Still, I liked very much this. Uh, I saw this game live. Uh, I liked very much here the decision by, by Giri. I actually thought he would play bishop f3. Uh, not much people were saying this move. And I can understand it, because here black would play Rook ac8, and again, we have the same situation. I had some idea with sacking the pawn on c2, but maybe it's too violent. I thought about bringing the knight to d4. But, well, it's not completely clear, but uh, Giri's move is much stronger, bishop d3. So funny move. Uh, we're using different tactical ideas here, like Ryo is saying the knight is not, uh, it's not possible to take it due to bishop take h7. And at the same time, we are reorganizing here our knight transfer. To d4. So black play d4. Any other move like rook ac8, uh, white could play knight e2, and we're trying to bring the knight to d4. That would be fantastic, of course. So it's understandable that black play d4. And here we have important detail queen e4, forcing the change of queens. And then we have something to play for here the weak pawn on d4. So very nice game, very nice play by Anish Giri. Let's continue. So here is something simpler for you. I will just give you one minute on this one. Send me Black's best move, please, in this Karo Khan battle. Last move from White was H4. One minute for Black's best move, please. OK, time's up. Uh, remember, guys, we're not doing tactics. I mean, sheer tactics today. It's tactics uh, supporting strategical goals. Uh, some people are saying knight takes e5 here. I don't think that's possible, uh, just for the record here. Some people are saying knight takes e5. Let's see if we can get this straight. Knight takes f4. OK, I get the point. You want to get back the knight on e5. But I think there will be a pattern against the h7 pawn. I think I will play here queen g4. Now you see what I'm planning, right? So if knight takes e5 is impossible, no? then we, will, we just win the game with white, I guess. Queen h5, or what do you think? It looks like I'm mating here. Bishop takes and so on. So you would have to take with a bishop instead. OK, maybe this is playable. What do you think? Did I make a mistake here? Ryo says bishop takes e5 instead of knight takes e5. I guess this is what he means, right? Aha, and now maybe bishop takes d6, but then it hangs on b2. So I guess perhaps what white should play here, just take and take on e5. And take here, what do you think? Oh, this is not so clear. Yeah, maybe it's not so clear. Also, there is a pawn hanging on h4. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk with Austin. So Austin, I can unmute you. Maybe you, you have some better option here for white. What happens after knight takes e5? Uh, it's a bit messy, uh, isn't it? Oh, wait. Uh, I was... We take with the knight or with the bishop on e5? That's the first question. So we take with the... No, that oh, doesn't make that doesn't make sense, does it? Because, or it makes sense. No, I was oh. thinking knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, uh, f4. Wait, what was the line? 
but uh, here the people are playing f4, so we, there is no chance for that. Yeah, queen g4, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, knight takes e5, queen h5. But then I'll take your now queen h5 is bad because then I'll take your your bishop. Uh, never mind. So th that's why I was saying maybe it's we should take with the bishop instead, but uh, it's still very messy. It's still very messy because let's see here if we can get this in order. He will take with the bishop then, right? So it would be like this. Okay, so it's so it seems that actually black can reach this uh, this position. The same thing, right? Can take here. So in the end, the pawn on h for Hanks. But but what do you, what do you think, uh, Austin, about this position? Maybe black is uh, pawn up, but white has some compensation here due to the control of the e5 square. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not completely convinced here. Uh, what's what's going on in this end game? Interesting. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's see what happened in the game. Some people were also saying here the move rook a4. It's very interesting to bring over the rook to g4. I get the point. However, I'm afraid that white could play here c4. And in this way, uh, we're fighting against black's plan. And if knight c5, I guess we could play something like bishop c2, right? So it's not completely clear. Let's listen again to Austin. Okay, Austin, which was your suggestion here for black? Uh, I would play knight f6 to stop h5 and prepare knight e4. Exactly. We now prevent h5 and we're preparing to go knight e4. This is a very good plan in such structures. Of course, the tactical motive here involved is the pin. As everybody can see, the pawn cannot take because then the queen falls. So that's the idea here, knight f6. Very subtle move by, by black. Uh, it, the first uh, choice of the engine, of course, knight f6 as well. The game... Continue like this, rook 81, bishop d7. Black knows that uh, he has knight e4 in the pocket. He can play it later. Rook f1, knight e4, queen h2, and bishop d6. Fantastic position for black. Somehow this game ended in a draw, but uh, white should be very happy about that result. As you can see, black has strong pressure here. This knight is very strong, and also white has a few weaknesses to take care of. So uh, maybe at a later occasion, we can come back to this variation, knight d takes e5. Uh, that's a very interesting variation, but uh, personally, I prefer Malcolm Yan's solution here, knight f6. This looks very nice, very elegant way of improving our pieces. Uh, obviously, if we had gone uh, to c5 instead, white could then continue with, with their plan with h5 and get some initiative on the king side. All right, nice move, knight f6. The hidden pin, so to speak, this pawn on e5 is pinned, although we might not notice uh, at first sight. Let's continue. So this one I think should be easier. I will only give you one minute here. Why to play and get a considerable strategical advantage? Okay, time's up. Some people were saying here the move rook c7. Uh, please remember today's uh, subject, it's not uh, spectacular mates or uh, uh, sacrifices in the attack and so on. I don't think this really works. Um, well, we can check it, of course. Knight takes e7, I guess that's the idea. The king should go to f8. What do we have here? Knight, I guess, should go back. Or is there some queen b4 coming up? Did I go the wrong way with the king, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe this is dangerous for, for black, is it? Wow. So maybe I, I just made a huge mistake there. I should just go the other way. King h7. And I guess my next move is knight. Oh, uh, as he says, queen before knight a6. Okay, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Oh, knight a6. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. You're winning material here. Knight g6, king g8. Okay, you you might be right then. So maybe you can even go to to f8 then. Aha. But in any case, I think the king would feel safer on h7. And whenever he plays, let's say knight f5, I'm ready to go knight e6. I think I'm defending here with black. Uh, I think I can can hold this with, with the black pieces. So it's probably not an attacking position, really, what we have here. Let's listen to Sarvagna, who has a completely different idea in mind. Please go ahead, Sarvagna. Um, I said knight takes g7 first, and then after knight takes g7, then there's rook c7. Uh-huh. Nice. So I moved my queen somewhere, queen a6. And, and rook takes e7. Seven. So, so what did you achieve by this uh, sequence, Sarvagna? What was the point of all this? Um, a better rook, like 
So we're going seventh rank, and then, uh -huh. uh, I guess, like I guess he moved the queen to a, like a worse, like a worse spot. Sure. But, um, the bishop on e e five is really good. I think this is a very important uh, aspect of the position, right? Uh, yes. Black has no dark squad bishop anymore, so it it will be difficult for black to to swap this bishop on e five, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, we didn't win anything uh, here in this variation. Yeah, like uh, Seper is saying, Bishop A1 might be a future idea and just go for an attack here. Uh, in the game, Black played Queen A3 and White, I guess there is some idea with Rook C8 here. So White didn't play Bishop A1, he just went back with Rook to C7. This is how the game went, 96. Somehow Black managed to keep uh, things under control, but, uh, and I think even Black won the pawn here. But after b4, white still had a better position here. He's a pawn down, but as uh, we were discussing, like Sal Wagner was saying, this bishop is very strong. And once white get their queen into the action, uh, the black king will be in danger. So I think it's a good uh, trade for white here. White is very happy to, from the initial position, white is very happy to swap. I mean, of course, it was possible to swap in this way. Uh, and we could try the same idea. But I guess in that case, black can sometimes play f6. and. He can defend in a better way. So it was a good idea to eliminate his pawn on, on g7 in order to remove the black king's cover. So knight x uh, g7, what we have here is the tactical motive of the overloaded piece, right? The knight is overloaded to two different tasks. And that can be exploited by white here, taking on g7 and then rook c7, picking up the bishop. And even if we don't win material, we emerge with a better position. Aha. Anyway, let's uh, continue. Yeah, this example I found just the other day. Let's uh, give you two minutes here, playing with white, Max Sodlu, a very strong former world junior champion with white pieces against a wonder Liang. So two minutes, try to find white's best way to go here. There are some pitfalls uh, on, on the way, so please be careful. Okay, time's up. Remember that, uh, again, this is about strategy more than about tactics. You should just use the tactics in order to achieve something strategically. So some people were saying knight f5. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even see this move. Pawn takes and bishop h3. That looks like a very interesting idea. Uh, it was not played by Max Olu in the game. I guess black would move their queen somewhere, let's say to e7. White can then take, and white can get back the material like like this. But is it clear that uh, that white benefits from this? Let's say I take on, on c8, or or did I miss something? But I mean, generally speaking, I'm not sure that white is favored by swapping his minor pieces for that uh, for for that rook in this position. So what did Sepper say? Could I play knight g4? When was that here? Oh. Interesting. Well, it looks a bit risky to me, but it's it's not really relevant here, to, to be honest. It's it's not that relevant uh, because there is something much better for white. So Greg says queen e3. When is that, Greg? You will have to help me out here. I I cannot see at, at which moment. After rook takes e8, let's see. Bishop h3, uh, I was saying queen e7, maybe that's a bad square for my queen, should I have put my queen somewhere else? But let's check Greg's variation here. After rook takes c8, queen e3, targeting the pawn on b6, and white is better, I guess. Um, I don't know, knight is, oh, I'm about to get mated here. Okay, nice one, Greg. Okay, I won't play like that then. Uh, so maybe this is uh, suffering for a bit suffering for black. I think I put my queen in the wrong place, didn't I? I should have put my queen somewhere else. Uh, queen c6, maybe? Is that a good square? But then I'm queen d8, maybe? Hard to tell. I mean, if Greg was attacking my pawn on b6, I better defend it, right? So what do we have here? Something like this? Bishop takes. Well, not. Not so clear. Some e5 coming up as well. If I take with a bishop, then you will play e5. And that is also the pawn on f7. Oh, a lot of stuff to look into here. 
Max Odlu, why didn't you play Knight F5 then? Well, to be honest, uh, I didn't uh, notice this uh, option, and perhaps he didn't either. But I like the way he played in the game. So what uh, what to say about this? Maybe I moved my king the right way. Oh, that's why I think Knight G4 says Seppel. Maybe you're right, and Knight G4, funny move. Uh, maybe that's the best choice, and it's a complete mess here. Yeah, I, now that I compare with other variation, I kind of like this. Aha. Because now if pawn takes, we can take on e4, and this bishop is hanging. White cannot go g g5 here. Maybe you're right then. Okay. Also, I think I put my king in the wrong place, right? I should have put my king on on g8 instead, here, for example. But uh, okay, it's a complex uh, situation. Maybe this is, this is okay for for white. Maybe white is better after bishop takes c8 and e5, perhaps. Yeah, this looks in interesting for white. But now let's compare. But still, knight g4 looks like a very serious try for, for black here. So maybe that's the reason why. Okay. Some people were saying also the move e5, which would be a typical solution if this was a tactical quiz, right? But I'm not sure this works because, I mean, I, I can understand the idea. If pawn takes, you want to play knight b5 and knight d6, something like that. Uh, okay, I get the point, but probably I could take with the rook instead, can't I? And oh, and bishop d5 also says uh, Austin. Oh, interesting, bishop d5, intermediate move. Yeah, that's even better. Correct. That's a nice one. Aha. And then, uh, so Alex says knight b5 and then e5. That's a very creative solution. What is going on here? Knight e5, I could give back some material. Uh, should I do that? Or it, this became very messy. I, you don't. You might not have to take, says Zepper. Yeah, maybe I don't have to take. Well, what's going on here? Hmm, very complex. I would think about knight d5 just giving back the material, but then I guess white is better here, right? Something like this. Is this now better for white? But we have a pin here also along the, along this uh, diagonal, so. What's going on? Queen f5, maybe? Queen e6? Some queen move here in order to unpin myself, right? Well, queen e6, is, is that possible? Or... I hope I'm not blundering anything here. Seems to me that black is to exchange up and I'm going to take back the pawn on, on e5, right? Queen takes a 6 okay, I'll take with the rook then, so that you don't take me with, with tempo here. Bishop base 3 okay. Yeah, yeah, bishop h3, okay. What about f5 here? Is this possible? I think I'm playing with this pin now. So I don't know, bishop e5, but my impression is that white is playing for a draw here. I'll take on e5 somehow, don't I? Well, I think we, <laughs> yeah, this became very tricky, but doesn't black have, have one more trick than white here? It seems to me, and I'm just going to save one of my rooks here. Yeah, something like this. Or maybe you guys see something more convincing, but okay, but I'm going to lose this pawn. Oh, that's not the idea. So what What then? <laughs> but I have two bishops. Oh, that's, yeah, thanks. Sorry, that was extremely silly. I went with the wrong rook, of course, with the other rook. So now we are playing with two extra exchanges. Yeah, at least black is not losing here. I'm, I'm playing for a win here, even though you can take on b6. Anyway, I think we got uh, the other one to see one exactly. <laughs> this is an interesting end game. Uh -huh. We can check this some other day. Now let's get back to reality and see what Max Sodlu played in the game. He didn't have to calcul calculate even 5% of all the stuff that we're calculating right now. And uh, he couldn't move the pieces. Remember, he was sitting there playing. He cannot move the pieces. He has to visualize everything from the beginning. Let's listen to Zoe because Zoe found the right way to go here. Please, uh, Zoe, share with us. I want to play b5 attacking a6 and black can't take on b5 because then bishop takes is a skewer so black would have to play pawn a5. Sure black would have to play pawn a5, pawn a5 and what's your next move then? And then knight c6 and again nice. black can't nice. take twice because of the pin slash skewer. Exactly no matter how black takes back on c6 that would be a skewer with bishop b5 no intermediate checks of course because we have bishop d4 so this tactics is a bit more simple to to analyze uh, to visualize when you while you're sitting there playing so that's what uh, happened here in the game 
uh, actually in the game, uh, I wonder Liang played here rook a8 instead, but that didn't change the verdict of this position. Now, uh, Max Otto played simply pawn takes, bishop takes, and again, he uses here the, the topic of the skewer or the pin or whatever you, you like to call it, knight b5. Very good move, targeting the pawn on, on d6. No complex variations here. We just play it slowly, you know, Petrosian style. Rook a6 and a4, that's another good move. Actually, e5 was perfectly possible. Uh, you could play, play e5 as well. But I guess he, he knew that he had such a good position that he didn't want to make things more complex. He just played a4 here, giving the knight some more support and preparing perhaps bishop a3 at some point. Yeah, yeah. the rest of the game is not so interesting. Why, uh, black took, now I took with a pawn. You will soon see why. Now we play for the a file. And the last move here in, in, in my notes, uh, the last move in, in this example, it's not the last move of the game, but it's, it's a good move to finish this example. He, exactly, so we found rook a6, that's what he played here. So very nice uh, positional display by Max Odlu. The rook is coming to a1. Uh, Black has many weaknesses. Uh, this bishop is a good bishop, by the way. Even if they are, these two bishops are swapped, uh, white will still have a a good uh, position, I mean, a very good position, bishop c4, bishop e5, and so on, many things to do here. Anyway, very clean play by white here, b5, exploiting the tactical motive of, uh, of a skewer or a pin along this, this diagonal. All right, let's move on. So this example, let me tell you, I found just the other day. This game was played like one week ago, two weeks ago in the Romanian championship. And the grandmaster will be white here. He spotted a little tactical detail. Let's see if you can spot it as well. Two minutes, try to find the best continuation for white. If you can give me a little variation, that would be excellent. Okay, time's up. This is a complex position. We should make some kind of assessment here before we continue. It's, uh, I think, rather obvious that white has a more active position. One big difference here is that the bishop on b2 uh, has an open diagonal to work on, which is not the case with a black Fianchetto bishop. It's just hitting the pawn on b5. And at the same time, white has almost all their pieces in play, uh, which is not the case in, in black's camp. We still have the move rook c8 is missing here, so to speak. Black would love to play rook c8 at some point. However, it's white to play, and we have a very important tactical detail here, which was found by Aradia Panda. So, Aradia, please uh, share with us uh, what to play with white here. Yes, I was thinking um, bishop, I mean, not bishop, I mean b4, and uh -huh. then he'll probably go, well, the idea is if he goes bishop take b4, then I have queen b3. And oh. yeah, if bishop c5, I think, well, we obviously take on e4%. Take on c5, and if he goes, uh, puts his bishop on any other square. Uh huh. Like, sure, sure. Let's uh, let's continue. Yeah, if he so puts like, his bishop somewhere else, you mean at this point, or or nah, in, no, you yeah. mean here, right? Yeah. If uh -huh. he puts his bishop like anywhere else, um, I wasn't totally sure, but I was thinking like maybe take on g6 or or. Uh, or actually take on e4 and then go knight take g6 and then like a5 and that seems good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I get the picture here completely. You want to take on f7. That's exactly what this position is about. But maybe, just maybe the move order is not 100%. But here I think white should be winning, right? Because you take, uh, again, I cannot take because now also the rook is participating. So we can again take. But I think uh, if you play it this way, uh, with queen b3 first. I think there might be a problem here. Can I play perhaps knight c5 and if queen takes, I can take on e5? Maybe, because now the bishop is on priest on d3, right? So I, th I think uh, we can e execute this in a better way. So before, you're completely right, uh, Aradia, great work. Before is the right move uh, with two important ideas. One of them, of course, to clear the c file and the other one more let's say, 
deep idea is to play queen b3 with pressure at f7. But if bishop takes before, I think that we should just take here first. I think that's the big difference here. And now when black takes back, then we play queen b3. So in this way, we are discarding any intermediate moves like we saw here, the idea of, uh, what was it? Knight c5, right? So that's why we eliminate, eliminate that uh, bishop first. So what about queen e7? Yeah, good question, uh, Zepper. I think the problem for black here is that there is a fork coming up. I can see a fork here. I think white would play here knight c6, right? So I don't think there is any good solution for black in this position. And in the game, they didn't take on on, uh, on before. Okay, once you notice queen e7, knight c6, it's easy to propose knight xc5 first and then play queen e7. But here, I think white can use the idea of rook c7 by playing first knight f5. And then we can play rook c7, and I think white should be winning here. Uh, so many threats for black to, to take care of at the same time. Why not knight c6 instead of queen b3, says Austin. Let's see, Austin. Oh, right away, knight c6. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you have to look for the maximum advantage, right? Um, I'm sure this is also playable for you, but uh, maybe it's not maximum. I don't know. We, we can look at this. Maybe you have some f5 or some intermediate move here. Uh, who knows? I don't think uh, this is bad for... Maybe you have something with bishop. But if you take on e4, I, I will I will take with a pawn, I, I guess. I can even take with a pawn here, can't I? So white is better, but not winning, says Alexander. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Uh, this looks nice for white, but again, you have to look for the maximum advantage here. And actually, if you play the other way, if you take first on e4, you're winning here. I'm pretty sure that white is winning here. This is simply too much for black to, to handle, too many things coming up at the same time. Look at white's pieces here, fantastic activity. Everybody is joining the party, so to speak. So it's... Uh, it's not uh, okay. Nathaniel says also there is an idea with f5, f6. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's another idea for white here. Let's see what happened in the game. B4 was played. Black didn't dare to take on B4. That's understandable. Uh, they played here bishop f8. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, some more ideas coming up. Uh, Oh, Nathaniel says that in this variation, after queen d6, we could go f5 and f6. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree completely. This looks very nice for, for white. Uh, probably white can play for, might have a big advantage here. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> queen g4, maybe or f6 or whatever. And uh, Sepper says that knight takes f7 first. So when would that be? Uh, yeah, many options for, for white, but let's stick to the, to the course of the game here. Before black played bishop f8. And here white had a choice. Uh, we have one human move and we have one engine move. Um, anyone, what do you think white played in the, at this point? Now they didn't stick to the plan anymore. Now this wouldn't make sense, right? right? Because now black can play bishop d5, I guess, at some point. So now we should look for something else. So the, yeah, Sepper, you're right. Knight takes f7, that's the engine move. Funny, uh, you can actually play this. The thing is that there is a big difference here. The rook would come to c7. So you can play here f5, and then you can use the e6 square for the knight, and then you can use the c7 square for the rook. As simple as that. Knight e5, for example, knight e6, and white is probably winning here with rook c7 coming up. Let's say you can play here first. Uh, just take, if you don't want to make life too complex, you just take first. And then you play rook c7. And you pick up that bishop. And yeah, white, white is winning. So that was the engine suggestion. But the human move was very strong as well. I think some people were saying this move in the beginning. Knight f5 was played here. Very nice. Now all the pieces directed at the black king. It's not easy to play to be, play black here at all. Uh, there was knight e6 in the game and queen h5. This is already too much for black to handle. Knight takes, queen takes, queen e7, bishop d4. No reason to hurry here. Uh, white uh, takes the opportunity also to put pressure on this little pawn. What to do here with black? Impossible to save black uh, in this position. As everybody can see here, the knight cannot move because then it would be mate, right? So bishop c8 was played in the game, queen h5, f5, and here a little tactical transaction, we could say. Rook takes c8, very nice, and bishop takes f5. 
yeah, and White went on to win. So very nice uh, attacking display, or play for the initiative by the Romanian Grandmaster here, starting with the move D4. Important to see these kind of details, like I was saying, uh, take uh, on E4 and Queen B3. All right, let's see what we have next here. Yeah, this is a more simple case, I think. Should one minute be enough for you, maybe? I think so, yeah. One minute, try to find a way in which white can use tactical details in this position in order to get the positional advantage. Okay, time's up. Maybe I gave, I gave you very little time here. But uh, we had some correct answers here. Uh, let's see here who's going to talk on this one. Uh, Sepper, maybe. Uh, let's see what Sepper has to say about this one. OK, you so can start with us. The d5 pawn is uh, weak, and I wanted to target it. But uh, so I thought of like g4 and bishop g695. Aha, uh -huh. and you're not losing a pawn, right? You're not giving away a pawn here. Because d5, you can capture, you can capture d5. Okay, you can capture d5 right now if you like, and you're definitely yeah, better. Yeah, but... sooner or later, because the pawn is so weak, you can delay the capture. Maybe like with bishop f3 first. But I think you have an even better move here. Remember, we're talking about some tactical details here. I think you can play uh, using use a tactical motive here in order to get an even bigger advantage. Look at the black pieces. I think there is one black piece which is in danger here. Oh, yeah, 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 at four. At exactly, four. you can play a four. Yeah. So now this is very tricky for black because f5 is coming up. Black would be forced to keep their queen on this diagonal, right? In order to keep the idea of queen g3 check. So yeah, we cannot play like a queen f6, then white could just play a five, trapping the bishop. That's the whole point of all this. And if queen d6, I guess, the best choice would be simply to take on d5, and then we can play f5. So you're completely right, uh, Sepper. Excellent work. That's what this is about. White really would like to play knight e5 in this kind of position. Uh, That's a typical idea here, knight e5. However, it cannot be done right now, obviously, uh, due to the bishop hanging on, on e2. So that's why we play g4 first. And then we're happy that we have this tactical motive of, OK, you can say actually two, two tactical motives. One of them is trapping the bishop with a five. And the other, like Sepper is saying, we have this idea of targeting the pawn on d5. So two in one, you can say here. In the game, white instead played rook c5, the move that some people were saying. And actually, black had a decent game here, uh, rook uh, fd8. That's how, how the game, yeah, this was just a training game. And after rook dc1, I think I noticed uh, this motive perhaps, and I played a6, and black was. Black was fine here. It's important to give this bishop some, some air. However, g4 was very strong. Uh, and like some people were saying here also, bishop f4 uh, was coming up. Uh, OK, Rayo, we have an argument here. What, what happened, Rayo? Uh, I don't follow you. Uh, yeah, because you said f4 and f5. Rayo is complaining that I didn't approve of his solution. Well, you, you said simply, that uh, you would play uh, f4 and f5, but that doesn't apply if I play queen d6, right? Now you cannot play f5. So maybe next time you can be a little more specific and we avoid any fighting, right? Okay, so that's it. g4, bishop g6, and knight e5, exploiting some hidden tactics in the position, so to speak. Let's see what's next here. Yeah, this one should be simple for you, I think. Uh, some kind of Pirk or modern defense, perhaps, or King's Indian even? No, King's Indian, no, because there's a pawn on C2 still. Anyway, it doesn't matter from which opening this uh, position occurred. What's important here is to find the right way to go with black. So you have one minute, try to find a way in which black got a huge positional advantage here. Okay, maybe I should give you one more minute uh, because uh, you're close. Many of you are close, but uh, I think one more minute would make sense here. So please look a little further. I think at move two, you have different choices. Uh, I think one move is better than the other. Okay, time's up. I think uh, Sepper, 
he told me this is actually the Philidor. Yeah, this looks like it's a Philidor, uh, Philidor's defense with black. So thanks. Thanks Apple, for that input. Okay. Uh, Alexander Ratton found this one. Please go ahead, Alex, how to continue with black here. Uh, so I thought the first move was knight takes e4. And then, for example, after bishop takes e4, I was thinking f5, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't work. because I, I'm sure as well, because the king is now exposed, right? Yeah, just bishop d5. And then, and then I can move yeah. the bishop and I'm, I'm a piece up. So then you found the right move here. So you have to play d5. and then Exactly, you play d5. So that's a little trick here. I mean, you're actually combining tactical motives against all these three pieces, so, so to speak. I cannot take in any way, right? Uh, nothing to do here with white. Really. Knight takes, you can just take and uh, you will get the piece back uh, with a very good, let's say, strategical uh, advantage in, in this position once you take on, on e3. So let me tell you, Alex, that in the game they took with the knight instead. So how would you continue? Mm, probably still d5. Sure. I don't know about f5, honestly. Some people were sending f5 as well. I don't know, but by instinct, I would avoid it because let's say they play something like knight g5 and bishop d5. Who knows? Maybe there's nothing there, but uh, it still would be a bit scary. So much better d5, right? We, don't, we avoid any exposure of our king. And here, there was an interesting moment in this game. Of course, if white moves their knight, the bishop will fall. I mean, wherever it goes, there's going to be rook takes e3. However, in the game, white played knight b3 here. Uh, okay, Troy, we will come to your answer uh, later on. Knight b3. And here we have a very interesting moment. Uh, let's see, Alex, if you can find the black's choice here. You have one very obvious move, but maybe you can look for another one. What do you think the Grandmaster played here? Did he take on e4 or he found a better choice? Um. Or tough, tough question. I mean, he could take, of course, a d takes e4, but he didn't. And I think he didn't do it due to knight c5. And he was troubled by white's activity. The, the engine gives a big advantage for black, I think. But uh, for a human, it's easy to see that white still has some, some things to, to play for here. So he yeah. played a better move here in the game after knight b3. Aha, Austin found this one. Exactly. And Zoe as well. Yeah. Uh, Try to maybe. get back the piece in a better way, Alex. Maybe bishop f5? Exactly, that's what he played. Excellent. Bishop f5 was playing the game because in this way, he's going to take on e4 with the bishop. And in this way, either he will swap the bishop on g2, which would be fantastic for black, or he can also swap the white knight after knight c5, bishop takes e4. This is very good strategically for black. He's getting rid of his worst piece, so to speak, this bishop. And uh, yeah, creating new threats here. I think if white takes on b7, queen b8 must be uh, unpleasant for, for white. So in the game, they just took on e4 and d takes e4. And black had a big advantage here. We're very happy to swap that uh, bishop. Now we keep the good bishop. Um, queen c8 might be an idea also targeting the pawn on, on h3, b2 is hanging. So, OK, thanks, Alex. Excellent work. Let's see here. We had a different uh, suggestion here by by Troy. Troy said, why not bishop f5 trying to take advantage of e4? Uh, but when is that? Right at the beginning, you mean? Right right now? No, I don't think so. No? Um, when is that? Just, just to see if we can sort this out. Uh, when do you want to play bishop f5, uh, Troy? Or maybe you mean after taking on e4, like, like here. But, well, Bishop f5 here? Well, who knows? Interesting idea. Uh, but now I can take on c6, I guess, and, and I can play queen, queen d3. Oh, but then you will play queen e7. Oh, I didn't think about this. <laughs> Anyone, what do you think about this? Uh, knight takes f5 works, says Sepper. Uh, let's see. Oh, 95 first move. Now this is very confusing. Uh, so many choices here for both players. You know what I think? Maybe this is the problem with, with this idea. I'd play 95 and I'd play, if I'm not mistaken, queen h5. Now I think white is attacking here. I also have bishop d5 just in case. So I don't think you should play this with, with black. And now you say bishop f5 at once. That looks really weird. Is that possible? 
Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's possible. But, 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 I, but I mean, <laughs> okay, you can play like this. I, I get the point. You, the rook is active and so on. Yeah, it's 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 a funny variation. Yeah, maybe you can play like like this bishop f5. Funny move. Who knows? It, it wouldn't surprise me if it worked. But uh, yeah, maybe the other choice was was simpler. Can I play like this? Just one last try here. Can I play like this e5? Try to take that exchange here. Is, is that possible? Okay, this pawn is always hanging, so maybe it's not a good idea. Yeah, I'm at a loss here. Maybe it is possible to play bishop f5. That's a really funny move. Uh, but I think what he played in the game was was very clever as well. Knight takes e4, and then if bishop takes e4, we have the nice move d5. In the game, knight takes e4, and still d5. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you know about these tricks. In the King's Indian, you can come across similar ideas. You just blow up the white center using some tactical uh, ideas, like in this case, the bishop on e3. So, excellent. Knight takes e4, very nice tactical shot by Grandmaster Bauer from France. Let's move on. And here we have David Navarra with black and Daniel Yufa with the black pieces. So why do you think black should play here? Should I give you two minutes on this one or it's very easy? Let's see. Black to play and get a huge positional advantage. Okay, time's up. As you can see, this is a Karo Khan advanced variation. White got the two bishops, but uh, Black's uh, minor pieces are fairly active here. I think White has just played a5, building up some pressure on the queen side. However, it's Black to play, and uh, I think many of you found the right way to go here. One of them is Annika. So please, Annika, share with us how to play with Black here. So you can play d4 and queen to d5 because the d5 square is very good at attacking. It puts sure, more pressure sure. on the g2 pawn and attacks the bishop. Of course. So if I take with a pawn, you were saying simply queen d5, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting also to, to compare here. We have two, uh, two ways of ex executing this idea. We could take first or we could play queen d5. But here it's clear that queen d5 must be much stronger because we would actually take on g2 and then keep that bishop. It's fantastic. But okay, in the game, Navarra took with the bishop instead. So, how would you continue, Annika? So, if you take with the bishop, then queen d5, I'm not sure if you can do it because maybe, like, I guess he can kind of shoot away the queen from its spot. Maybe queen e2, right? Yeah. Maybe this is not so bad for, for white because now, if you, let's say you just pick, you take back the material here. You will have some issues on the on the a file if i'm not mistaken yeah so okay. that doesn't work so instead you play queen d no, you play bishop takes g2 and then you play queen to d5 exactly that's how that's how they played in the game bishop takes e2 king takes and queen d5 so this is how how the game went now we can see that queen f3 is not available anymore because then we have knight h4 right so white had to play something else and uh, there was a funny twist here because Navarra actually played rook f3 I think this is a funny move but um, I think it likes it's kind of a kind of a trick because he knew that if they give check and take on f3 well then he would get some positional compensation well he would actually be doing rather well here with the white pieces but black didn't play like that black resisted the temptation and didn't play knight h4 black simply took on b5 that's that was very clever because also Black knew, of course, that this knight is fantastic now. I mean, that's the big point of this whole combination. Uh, and after queen d3, do you think white, I mean, Black swapped queens or Black kept the queens? What do you think? Swap queen, queens or keep the queens? Don't swap. Yeah, exactly. He kept the queens. He played queen c6 here. It's funny, again, you can see Navarra, he's toying with the tactics here, also knight h4. He would be ready to go. I guess king g3 here uh, because we don't have time to take the rook because the queen is hanging, right? Uh, and again, he played here b5. This, I, I, I thought this was a bit amusing. Again, he's inviting black to play knight h4, but it never works really because uh, then here, as you can see, uh, Navarra would have pressure on the queen side and the bishop is very strong. So black never wants to swap pieces or even net exchange. So black just played queen b7 here. 
and uh, kept strong pressure and went on to win. Here you can see uh, the main feature here is the strong knight on f5, but also the weak white king. So some questions uh, popped up here in the chat. Havish says king h3 better, so no knight f5. Yeah, exactly. But there was some other control of the long diagonal says Troy is crucial. Yeah, definitely. That's what black is playing for here. Queen and knight, you know, strong team as well. But there was some question here. I wanted to see if we could answer it. Instead of bishop takes d2, doesn't queen d5 work? Let's see. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Let's see here. That's here, right? Queen d5, queen e2, and knight h4. And I think also somebody was saying here, knight h4 immediately. Why didn't they play that? And I guess the answer is the same. Queen d5, and now I would have to protect uh, g2 with a rook from f2 or from, I guess, from f2, right? So again, uh, I think here, if you go for, I mean, for immediate tactics, uh, this is not going to work that well, will it? Because we have the same idea of a pin along the A file, or am I missing something? Let's see here. After knight h4, queen e. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, rook f2 first. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a very silly move to play, of course. Yeah, you're completely right. I, I just blundered the pawn. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I just knew I had to protect it twice, but I I chose the wrong move. Yeah, rook f2 first, of course. And then if queen d5, no, no, but then queen d5, I have bishop f1. So that's, that's not working for, for black, definitely. So you would have to take here on g2. But then again, we have the same situation that I was referring to. I'll just take and then take and uh, yeah, this is not that convincing because the same story again, right? But still queen d5 instead of taking. Uh, if you can, what about a5 here? But look at this bishop, please. Look at this bishop. It's, it's a very strong piece. Uh, I can maybe just play bishop c5. I don't know. Who is better here? Uh, I'm not convinced. This pawn, we had a lecture on past pawn. Maybe we should look at this example at some point. Okay, I I'm not sure. You're going for some counterattack here, rook d8. Well, I have no idea, but uh, this is certainly easier to, to handle if you move the pieces, right? In, in the game, you cannot move the pieces. So I don't know. Rook takes, you're going to give check. Uh, what will happen here? King, king g3, What's, what is this? I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe black is winning, but uh, it looks unpractical to play like this. So, um, what else? Uh, anything else here in this example? D4, bishop takes D4, and bishop takes G2. I think this is very clear cut. I think he made the right choice, uh, very practical, just like Max Todlus uh, play, if you remember that. Uh, we saw that idea with, with b5, uh, with the white pieces. It's very clear cut. You don't have to calculate a lot. This is move 25. Who knows how much time they had uh, on the clock at this point uh, in the game? We don't know, right? So I think it's always a good idea to be practical. And here, the pattern is very simple. We have the strong knight, and also we have white's weak king. And at some point, we'll be able to seize the long diagonal, like Troy said. So uh, I think this is a very good way to continue 64 minutes white and for yeah, who knows austin you have the time really well i didn't know the time management in this game but uh yeah i think bottom line here try to keep it simple try to keep it simple uh, we can all see that this night is it's not worth uh, three points anymore it's a much stronger night so let's continue yeah this is a really nice example uh, this is by a game by famous uh, US Grandmaster Yasser Seyravan. I really like this example. Um, let's see if you can find the key to, to improving White's position here. So why to play? Try to find the best way to continue here. Okay, so we had several correct uh, answers here. Many of you noticed that this is a typical position with a good bishop and a bad bishop, so to speak. This is White's good bishop, and this is White's bad bishop. And we can say the same thing about the black bishops, right? This bishop looks 
very strong. It would like to be uh, accompanied by the Black Queen. And at the same time, the Bishop on C8 is, is a bit passive. So um, that's important to, to bear in mind. Who got, it, who got this one right? We had several people here. Uh, Havish, Zoe, um, Austin, Alex, and Greg Shahid. Actually, Greg was the first one. He found this one in just like 10 seconds. That's really, that's really great. So um, I'm very happy about Greg finding this one so quickly. I think it's about experience also. Uh, you can see this pattern very quickly. And I don't know how much time Sairova needed to find this move, but uh, I don't think he needed a lot of time. He just knew the pattern. So let's listen to Austin. Austin found this one as well. Please go ahead, uh, Austin. Well, I would play b3 with the uh -huh. idea after bishop takes e3, queen c4 check. Exactly. The double attack. A simple tactical trick and very useful. In and if you don't take, then just I'll just play bishop b2. Right? Uh -huh. And that's how the game went. Here, black played f4. That's a typical move in the Dutch, of course. When you play the Dutch with black, you should always look for this move. Unfortunately, white is rather well coordinated here. So rook a d1 was played by Seirovan, and black played rook b4. Very creative play by black. And here the game became a little messy. OK, Seirovan won in the end, but uh, I think they played h3 and g4. And uh, yeah, black got some counterplay. However, it was possible to just stick to the plan here that uh, Austin was explaining. The bishop is now placed on the long diagonal. So this is a good moment to swap those bishops. Bishop, I mean, knight b4. And as you can see here, uh, black has a long way to equality after bishop takes b2, queen takes b2. Um, yeah, white is not winning, but uh, it's a very nice position. So uh, that's, I, I think, is the right way to, to handle this position. Look for the change of bishops. If we don't do this, if we play something else here, um, some slow move here, I mean, what else? Queen c2, for example. If you play like queen c2, let's say we play queen c2 with the idea b3 and bishop b2. Actually, black could play here queen f7 and uh, perhaps put the queen on, on g7, right? And, and they would have some, some pressure here. Uh, so it's much more clear cut to play b3 straight away. Also, if you play, yeah, uh, Austin says, thanks for reminding me. Queen c4, of course, we can always think about playing it the other way around. You know, I told you this was similar to the first example when we played bishop a6 and then we played queen a5. So, uh, check, you remember the very first example today. However, here black wouldn't uh, black would, wouldn't mind swapping queens because in that uh, way black is able. Let's say we take with a king here. I think so that the king protects. Yeah, I think so. We avoid any tactical tricks. So I mean, you can see the point here. It's not so easy for white to develop these pieces anymore. I think black is better now already here. Bishop e6 perhaps next move. Uh, how is white supposed to develop their queens at pieces? Not easy at all. Aha, uh -huh. maybe you can play bishop f1, says uh, Supper. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's definitely possible. I don't know. Maybe I can play knight e5 here. Uh, I think black's position is already improving. Um, anyway, another thing I wanted to tell you is that the engine also finds uh, an alternative way to go here. Bishop e3, which at first sight doesn't look that promising because of queen f7, the same maneuver, putting the queen on g7. This looks nice for, for black, right? But uh, what do you think white can play here? Anyone? Which would be white's best move here? Aha, Zoe, Sepper, you found it. Exactly. Now we can play bishop d4. Funny. The engine also finds it, but in a more complex way, you can say. And actually, white is still uh, considerably better here. Because, yeah, as you can see, here, it takes. We have the same story. And... Uh, yeah, there is some issue with uh, the knight on e7 being in there as well. So white will get back the the piece here. I don't know if you take with the yeah with the queen, I guess, so that we're hitting the knight. So white should be simply better here, thanks to his better bishop and the structure and so on. Aha! So very nice uh, little move, right? B3, very nice, uh, using this simple tactical trick in order to improve our position, especially improve our bishop, and in the long run try to swap that key bishop on f6. Let's see if we do a last example today. Let's see what else I have here. Um, yeah, we can leave that one for next time. So this one I think will be our last example today. You're playing with the white pieces, try to find a way in which white achieved a clear positional advantage here, two minutes.
Okay, time's up. Uh, I think all of you got the right idea, but the execution was not the same in every answer here. And I think the execution is very important. Let's uh, listen to Zoe, who found exactly the same uh, continuation as in the game. Uh, my move was e4, and the idea is if d takes, then knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, and at the end you have rook e1 with the skewer. Exactly. No way black can defend that rook. I mean, black would have to give back material with interest here. Uh, white would be clearly better. And I'm sure that you noticed also, Zoe, that if you try to execute this plan in a different way, if you start with rook e1, it wouldn't be the same thing. Because here, as Austin says, exactly, black would play knight e4. And black is keeping things closed. Not so easy for white. You could say that white has a development advantage because all their pieces are developed and the knight on b8 is still not developed. But still, it's not easy for white to, to exploit this here. So we have to act quickly. And that's why e4 is such a strong move. Then some people were saying rook e1 here. And I'm a bit puzzled by this move. Um, what would be the difference here? Queen e6 is a candidate move. I guess black is helped by swapping queens, isn't he? I don't know what happens here. There is some pawn also hanging on b4. Um, I think generally speaking, black uh, should uh, try to go for swapping queens, but maybe white is still better. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, rookie one, uh, I, I, I guess somehow it just gives uh, black more options. Yeah, I know why. You know why? Because now we can play knight 7 Okay, I, I understand this. And now I can play queen f8. Okay. Maybe this doesn't look so impressive for black, but look what happened in the game. e4, d takes e4. Ah, Austin says, what about the, the exchanging, the, the sacrifice, e takes d3? No idea, no idea. Maybe you can play like that. You're right. Maybe sometimes when there is an open file, uh, it makes sense to give up the queen if you can then quickly mobilize your pieces. But anyway, let me show you what I had in mind. If uh, now in the game, black played, uh, let's see, knight bd7. So you would think, that the best move for white here is rook e1. But the grandmaster didn't play rook e1. And I guess it's, I think it's because black would then play queen f8. And you see, the knight here protects there, and the queen protects the bishop. So white had a much stronger move here, fighting for the initiative. White played here bishop g5. This was a very clever move because now I cannot go back to f8 anymore. Then my pawns would be doubled and the king's side structure would be ruined. So black took on b4. And now white uh, found another power move here, knight e5, fantastic. Fantastic activity from the white pieces. And, and white, uh, white has a strong initiative and black was in deep trouble. White soon won the game. So basically uh, that's, a, that's about uh, what happens here in this position. Okay, Sepper says knight c5. Okay, I guess you mean here you can play knight c5. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can play knight c5 as well. Uh, looks nice to me as well. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I can take and, and put my bishop on c7. Maybe this is still okay for black uh, compared to the game. I really like the way he played here, bishop g5, just adding more power to the, to the initiative, so to speak. So that, that's a nice move. Anyway, what we have seen here, just like Zoe said, the idea is to play e4 before black is able to connect the rooks. That's the big tactical point here, of course, that the rook on e8 is potentially undefended. And that's why we should play here e4. And then we, we are ready to take uh, on e4. So black cannot take back due to this move, rook e1. And the rook is hanging on e8. So I guess uh, that's it for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.